Identifying the performance acceptance criteria <coughs> is another very, very important area. This is an area that actually gets um, surprisingly overlooked uh, because people seem, seem to be more concerned about what the system can currently cope with rather than meeting the performance goals of the uh, business. So um, identifying response times, throughput, and utilization goals and constraints is, is very, very important. And also it's important to get the detail here. Um, I have seen a requirements document that says um, response times need to be reasonable. And uh, I took that back to the business and, and uh, said, okay, so what, what would you define as reasonable? Um, 10 seconds, 10 seconds for what? 10 seconds to log in, okay, there's a specific task. Ensure that login task takes 10 seconds and you can write a performance script against that. Um, ensure that login times are reasonable, you cannot script against. Um, in general, response time is a user concern. Um, as I said, if you have somebody on the phone and it's taking a minute to load their, their details, you, you're not gonna have that user on the phone for much longer, nor are you gonna have their business for much longer. Um, throughput tends to be a business concern, i.e. Uh, can, we, can we cope with the number of transactions that we need to cope for in order for the business to, to uh, function. Uh, re resource utilization is a system concern. Your, um, your operational and technical design guys will tell you uh, that if you, have a, if you have a business that, that needs to generate 30,000 bills a day and uh, you don't have enough uh, resource physical source to do that, then you're going to be struggling from, from day one. So to be able to understand all these goals um, is, is a great help, and the, the sooner you identify these goals, then the uh, easier the testing process will become. Um, additionally, identify the project success criteria that may, that may not be captured by these goals and constraints. Okay, uh, the example I'm giving here is for using performance tests to evaluate what combination of configuration settings will result in the most desirable performance characteristics. Um, and there, what we're looking at is, is trading off um, memory size and disk size against CPU. Um, you may have a machine that um, may have four CPUs but can only handle so much memory. You may have to look to, um, to rebuild that machine on a 32-bit or a 64-bit configuration. So there, there are other criteria that, that could um, it could very much uh, determine the success of the project that won't necessarily be captured by the original performance goals. It's something that people need to be aware of. Um, planning and designing. Um, identifying the key scenarios. Uh, determine the variability among representative users and how to stimulate that variability. Defining test data and establish metrics to be collected. Um, what we're looking at here is, is key scenarios. So you look at what are the most common business scenarios that users would undertake and uh, determining that the um, system can cope with those common scenarios is very important. You may have some, some niche scenarios that might, might not be system performance, but you could still go live knowing that risk. Um, so if you could support 80% of your business functionality, some, people, some companies will decide that that is an acceptable percentage to be able to go live with. So you can, you can actually get into a risk-based, um, you, can, you can have risk-based decisions um, as a result of your performance testing. Um, defining the test data, this is again ensuring that um, the data you use is relevant to the testing you're doing. Um, I think a good example of that is um, some people were doing some database testing, and the, uh, the searches on the database, some 15,000 records on the database, they're running searches and they're getting response times of, of, of 0.5 seconds. And so we're drawing the conclusion that the database itself was absolutely fine. It wasn't until we, we came in to look at the context of the data in the database and found that every record in that database was identical. They all had the same index. And the database was able to obviously spot an index and read thousands of records in an instant. Uh, the minute we started spreading those indexes, uh, response times went up to 15, 20 seconds, as though the, the database had to be redesigned. So be aware of your data content. That is also important. Um, establishing the metrics to be collected. 
Uh, this, is, this is what you're looking at is to, um, what areas should you measure whilst you're running the test. It could be response times, um, it, it could be percentage CPU, the amount of memory that's in use, um, the, the input output rates for, for your network. Um, so you need to determine what metrics you, you're going to count to, to be able to uh, report and analyze on. Once you have all this information, uh, consolidate this into the models of system usage so that they can be implemented, executed, and analyzed accordingly. Configuring the test environment, um, this, is, this is to ensure the test environment itself is um, specifically prepared with the correct tools and resources necessary to execute each strategy uh, as features and components become available for tests. When you um, start performance testing, and one of the questions I do get asked a lot is, is when is the right time to do performance testing? Um, obviously, the sooner you can start, the better, but then you have to um, also be aware that not all the system is going to be available to you at the start of the project. The system will still be under development. It will still be under functional testing. It will still be under user acceptance testing. So um, what, what you have to look at is uh, what components of the system are being developed first and base your, your performance testing planning accordingly. So you need to ensure that the resources, i.e. the system, is available each time you, you come to execute your tests. Um, ensure the test environment is instrumented for resource monitoring as necessary. Uh, once you have your test environment all up together with the right amount of memory, the right amount of CPU, um, all your software loaded, your, your performance testing tools loaded, um, you can then start executing your tests only to find that you don't have system monitors in place. So suddenly you can't count your CPU, you can't count memory usage. So you have to abandon the test, go back, reinstall all that software for, for your um, monitoring, and then restart your testing. So it's just a, a heads up to ensure that all your monitoring uh, resources are in place before you start testing. These will, this will save you time in the long run. <coughs> Implement the test design. Um, very, very, uh, very, very basic. This is, this is um, testing 101. You know, develop the performance test in accordance with the test design. If you vary your performance test, if you think, oh, okay, I'll, I'll do this, I'll do that, this seems a good idea, and you go from the test design, you either go back to your test design and add your variance to that design so it's covered, or you stick to the test design. If you vary from your test design and do not document this, um, effectively, you, you're wasting your time and resource because you're going to be running tests that, that you, you've not been designed to run. And somebody will, will question um, the reasons why you're doing that. Test execution, once you're, you're fully ready and everything is in place, um, then what you, what you do is you, you be, begin by running baseline and uh, exploratory tests. And what we effectively mean for this is that you will run your scripts to ensure that they are uh, correct, that they function 100% and do what you want them to do. Um, you can't dive into a performance test and, and run, say, a load test if your, if your testing scripts do not actually do what your plans say they should. Um, so if, you're, if you want to run performance tests on user activity to, say, um, capture somebody, a, a, a caller's name and details, and you run a performance test that records their name but not their details, you're not going to get a full um, performance scope of your test. So 